Welcome to an integrated dynamics tutorial for Minecraft 1.12. The goal here is to be kind of a shorter video showing off the choice operator, which is extremely useful and I always forget about it. But basically it's an if else statement. Based on your Boolean input, the second input is taken if it's true and the third input is taken if it's false. So clicking on this guy, put our Boolean input in, like the lever, and it will select this input if you're true and this input if you're false. And these can be any type, but they have to be the same. So if you put in a double, this has to be a double. It can't be a string or anything else. It has to be the same type. And this example is not making anything particularly useful. It's just kind of a abstract example just to kind of to demonstrate what the choice can do. And then maybe you can find your own use for it. This is basically what I'm using to demonstrate the choice. And this will be another thing. This is going to be a falling edge detector or a signal generator, a falling edge. But I need that to generate a falling edge signal for this contraption. And so the example today is going to be based on this redstone signal, either they're transfer four items out of here or transfer zero items out of here. So my type is going to be integer, I guess. So I'll make the integers first, four. And of course, if you didn't know, if you have the labeler in your pocket, you get to click this little E. If the E is not there, that means you don't have the labeler. And it's just a really nice way to stay organized. So we got our zero integer and our four integer. Now for the choice. I could just stick in, I guess I have to grab my redstone boolean. So if there's any kind of a boolean signal, doesn't matter if it's a signal strength of 1 or 15, it will be true. I don't care about reading the actual integer value, I just want to see if there's any type of signal. And I'll name this one input boolean. So for this example, this is all somebody has to use. If they plug in the input boolean, and then they plug in the true parameter, and then the false parameter, what we get would be our choice. And then we could stick it right here. And that part would kind of work. There's another issue. If you're kind of aware of what's going on, you'll see this will transfer too much stuff at once. But I'm going to address that later with, with this. Just to be difficult and to do an extra step, I want to use this, which is basically the same choice you saw, but it's an operator form. And it's not required, but I myself am trying to understand this better, and I feel like if I use it, maybe it'll finally click for me. But the way this integrated dynamics works is kind of called like point free style or free point style programming. I don't know. Again, check the official discord. There's a lot of really good conversations. Scroll back in history, use the search feature, all kinds of good stuff. But anyways, I'm going to put my operator in here, which is the choice operator. And then I can stick in my input one, which is the Boolean, input two, which is the true, and input three, which is the false. What you can do with this type of when you start using operators and getting more abstract, you can do things like flip. And there's really interesting flips people can make. I don't want to go off on too, too much of a tangent here. But if you were to search the Discord for something like rotate underscore three underscore one underscore two, what that actually does is it makes it so you don't have to apply these things in order. You can actually switch them around. And it's, a, it's an advanced subject that I don't really understand yet, so I don't want to get too much into it. But it would allow me to basically set the third input first, and then the first input, and then the second input. And there's all kinds of reasons you might want to do that. And again, I myself don't fully understand them, but know they exist. And don't be afraid to ask questions, because I think that Discord is quite helpful. You just kind of have to have a bit of a starting point. You got to know what you want, right? <laughs> it's hard to ask a question if you don't know what to ask. So put in the operator, input one, two, there. So this is basically my choice. And 
and just for fun i'm not really going to see much i understand but you can slap it in oh no you can okay interesting take that back so we're true we see a four or false we see a zero and of course you'll notice right away if you have used integrated dynamics before it's going to transfer all of them it's not just going to transfer four Of course, I would have to actually stick this into here. Item amount. So this resolves to a four or a zero. And it just dumped the whole thing. There's a reason for that. It's transferring as long as it's true. And if you look at this thing, the properties here, it's actually running um, every one tick. Or how do, you, how do you say this? Ticks per operation. So basically, 20 ticks in a second, in one tick, an operation's happening, I think is, is how that works. So it's happening very quickly, it dumps the whole stack, if it's true. So that's why I want to play with this rising edge detector. And it's the second video I think I ever made. Somebody in the Discord, the official Discord, posted a really cool example and a, a write-up. I think it was, uh, the username was Natalie, if I'm pronouncing that right. But check out my second video, I give them credit. And I post their uh, text right up. Definitely recommend checking it out because they can explain it better than I can. But that's a rising edge where your signal goes from false to true. I want to flip that to a falling edge just to show whoever is watching that you can do it. And it's very easy. And it's not my design. It's ripped off the Discord. But anyways, the delay block. So what I want to do is I want to take this redstone reader. And again, as long as I see a signal, I want to get a Boolean. And I'm just going to call this uh, raw signal, for lack of a better word. And if you slap this in the delayer and you bump down your list from length uh, five to two, I only want history of two. I can slap this in. and this is basically going to give me a history of this will give me a history of this lever and it updates if you look you can change how quickly it updates and it looks like they're changing at the same time but if i was to bump this up if you hold shift and hit the up arrow you, you move two at a time See, that's a half second before it updates. So there's all kinds of use cases for these delayers. And I myself, I'm trying to understand all of them. But just know, it's kind of like a history thing. It, it almost lets you know a block state. The one thing I haven't figured out how to work around is it's updating all the time. You can't get it to like save an actual state. I would like to understand that. But I don't. So the next thing is a list. If we scroll to Boolean and for the for the rising edge, you would make a list of false and then true. But for the falling edge, all you have to do is swip flip them. So we look at it. This will detect on a falling edge, a signal coming from on to off, whereas the previous example was a rising. So you just flip these around. And I believe the relational equals is the next one we want to do. We want to check, I'm not naming any of these. This should be the delayer history. And then this should be the, uh, I don't know what you call it, a Boolean a bool list. Never, never been good at naming those. So relational equals. If the history equals that, what is this going to be? This is going to be the falling edge. Okay, 
had to make sure that works. So notice when we go from false to true, there's no change. But when we go back off, there's a quick pulse. And that's what I want to control this guy. So instead of being seen on the screen, it's too bad when you're in creative, you can't get a crafting table out. So the falling edge, falling edge, and a copy, falling edge M for monitor. Just sometimes it's nice to kind of visualize this stuff for diagnostics. But if we put this writer here, boom. And I don't know if I've uh, mentioned it at all, but all these different settings and parameters, I haven't changed any of them unless you've actually seen them in the video. So they're all default. Don't know if I mentioned that. Alrighty. We put our stack in. Hopefully this works. Otherwise, it'd be really embarrassing because I'm confident it will. Again, falling edge. So no item should drop. I double clicked. <laughs> That's still actually kind of embarrassing, even though that was my fault. My mouse's fault. Okay. We went true. Nothing. We go back false. We have dropped four items. Just to make sure, we got a stack of 64. Pulse one, pulse two is eight. So there really is an unlimited amount of potential for using this choice operator. And again, I just wanted to make a short video. I guess it's almost 15 minutes at this point, but uh, it might not be immediately obvious to anybody. Immediately obvious, like, uh, like it wasn't to me. So hopefully somebody finds it useful. Choice operator. If else, cool stuff. And this pulse generator of rising or falling is very, very slick. I've used it a lot in my survival world already.